energizer. But can it energize anything? If we plug it in, it appears not. Check out the flickering action on that light. Now this light should be on while it's charging. But it's it, go, it flickers and goes, ooh. Yeah, that tells me probably power supply failure. I don't think it can uh, maintain enough energy to charge the batteries. It's my theory. It's, it's like it's restarting over and over and over. It's, it doesn't look like a deliberate on and off just because of the flickering involved as well. Let's take it apart and find out. Only a month old and thanks to a lack of uh, receipt maintenance, cannot be returned. So we get to look at a brand new charger, figure out why it's dead out of the box. So, what's inside? Pretty much what I was expecting. Ooh, hello. For only a month old, I see burn marks. This is very dark around here. Like, there's no way this should have got this hot in this short amount of time. Apparently it's hardly been used. Here's our switching regulator. Uh, underneath here is our transformer. You can see primary, secondary. So this is the output to our charging device. Uh, little charge controller there. Be monitoring each cell I would imagine Sing separately. This is on the primary side. And I said, it feels like it can't develop enough power. Let's see what's on the other side. Should just lift out little spring terminals in there. What do they hook in and hook out? And there we go. A little bit of a shuffle. What a ooh oh hey. charred remains of a diode ha huh. guarantee you that diode's shorted and uh, is that a flyback diode I think that's our flyback diode for the switching uh, regulator it's funny how it's kind of working and getting hot and making enough to make a red light 0.4 so that is not a bad diode what about that one at the bottom just because we're here 0.2 that's our main rectifier for the secondary uh, there's our bridge rectifier for the um, uh, in. Is it going to focus? For the mains in. Obviously, our bridge is okay because things are happening. But I'm just going to. I mean, there's not much in the circuit. I'm just going to test it anyway. 0.6. That's good. 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 Okay, everything's good other than it is pretty stinking hot. Uh, there's our, our little inductor choke thingy there. It's probably... It's fine. Sometimes they open up. But if that was the case, this wouldn't work, would it? Um, I think we have to go to the microscope for this one and just see if the surface mount resistor is okay. Um, but the next thing we need to also do... Ah, so the light. Okay, there's that light. Uh, the next thing we also need to do is just see what kind of load we have on the secondary. So there's our capacitor negative on the uh, outside. So if we, that's our uh, main supply capacitor uh, for the charging circuit. So if we check our resistance across that. Just to see if there's any un unusual loading going on. And that's uh, that's in the thousands of ohms. 
So it's not like it's trying to dump into a short on the secondary somewhere, as far as I can tell. It all seems to be in the primary. Let's go in for a closer look. Okay, here we go. Looking nasty. We have a definitely burnt up little surface mount there, which appears to be. So we're looking at da, 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 this one here, which appears to be 301. 301. I'm going to write that down in case it like uh, crumbles into a million pieces if I touch it. 301. And uh, that one looks okay. And then we've got uh, uh, really. Uh, I mean, it's, it looks like a crack around there. It looks like a dry joint, but it looks like it hasn't really like fully broken through yet the solder is pretty crap at each side of this one this is being really toasty so maybe that was a bad connection on that surface mount resistor there all along and that's caused much of the heat um, because if we look at that uh, anyway on the left end of that surface mount um, it really looks like the solder never took and has always been a bad connection and the other side is uh, is really not much better looking maybe slightly yeah so it's possible that that's all it was with the darkest spot um, The darkest spot is definitely around that end. Let's see if we can get a value on that resistor. We'll try and resolder the end of it and make it respectable. And solder that up. A little bit of flux to help things along. Well, I am using flux cord solder. leave the heat on for too long it'll probably melt the other side and float the thing off the board and we'll get some onto here as well make that better so this 301 is that going to be 300 let's have a probe and uh, 302 Point seven, so that's all right. It got stinking hot, but it hasn't lost itself. And one o four is going to be uh, ten. Wait, slow brain. Ten k. Ten hundred k. One hundred k. I've got one point five k. That's probably an in circuit value because it's across something else. Um. That's fine. It's not really, really. High. It's not higher than the value of the resistor, so that's that's good. Uh, we know the diode's good. We know everything else is good. I see appears to have okay connections. They haven't deteriorated from heat either. All right. Will it blinky or will it hold the power?
uh, it's blinking. It's like... Ah, that's better. That's more definite. It's not good, but it's more definite. It's almost like it now has enough power to try and charge them, but there's possibly another issue going on. It was either caused by the lack of power or... Uh, who knows? But that was a lot quicker. That was a lot more... It was a lot more definite. It wasn't just like on, off, on, off, and then on, and then dim. Um, it's certainly not fluctuating as much as it used to. It's a more deliberate flashing of the LED. I think there's something else going on there. So, yeah, not good. When I opened it, um, I there was actually smoke coming off this area <laughs> when I, I popped it open and smoke came, uh, it had been building up inside. So it's still getting stinking hot. And uh, is, it, is it the switching there or is it the, the resistor itself? I think it's the resistor itself. I think... Yeah, very, very hot. There you go, I put the diode in my tester, and even though I had a, a forward voltage drop, it thinks it's a capacitor. Let's just give it a wiggle and make sure that it's got a good connection and tr test it again to prove it. Because I was thinking, why don't I just stick another diode in there, who knows. Look at that. I think, I, I don't think this diode's very good at all. Let's grab another one. I think a 1N4007 will be fine. I'm just going to chuck my meter across that old one, original one again. I'm just curious to see what it might say. 0.4, but let's go the other direction. Ah, oh, far out. Why don't I check that before? 0.8. Yeah, no good. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe the diode, fly flyback diode, just had enough. Alright, we'll chuck in this one in 4007, which it is what the, um, uh, if you look at the data sheet, the sample schematic has also got that as an indicative possibility. Now the, uh, one of the traces, the one at the top, is a little bit damaged from all the excessive heat that it's been subject to, so we just got to be a little careful around there. And uh, we'll just temporarily bodge it in place so we can uh, see if it's actually going to work. And then I'll worry about permanently attaching it where it lives. Didn't even record it when I plugged it in. Okay. No smoke. No sense of heat. We have a nice bright red light. And if I get my meter across the output... It's four and a half volts. This thing must run at four and a half volts. Uh, it must charge them individually because they only have to achieve one point one point um, two when they're fully charged. Um, but they probably charge to a slightly higher voltage than that and determine via temperature. And speaking of temperature. It's definitely getting warm on the secondary, so it's definitely pumping current through the batteries. It was just a flyback diode. Let's get it uh, fully reassembled and put that diode where it lives. Fooled by a partially shorted uh, flyback diode. What are the odds, huh? Let's... Uh open up the holes on those pads there so that diode has a good chance of getting back in without fully destroying what's left of the trace when you've got charred PCB like that just um, stick your ohm meter on um, pretty mega ohms um, or let it auto range and stick the probes in reasonably close together and push them into the board just make sure it hasn't carbonized and become conductive because we don't need that uh, this is just heavily discolored it hasn't actually become conductive so we're okay 
Now I've not pushed it all the way down to the board. I figured it would um, get a little bit of airflow under it. On the off chance that it does normally run hot and that's what caused its failure initially. I'm just going to tin the rest of that trace where it's kind of um, got brittle and uh, peeled up a little. I'll clean that up and if I need to I'll coat it with something but uh, we should be okay for gap around the components there. Just had to add a bit of solder where I wicked it off next door neighbour connections but that's looking perfectly fine. And the final assembly. Look at that. Nice bright light, no initial flashing, no nothing. So I'm going to leave that on and see if it does a full charge cycle. But I've got to call that done. And so you could see what I was seeing. If you if we checked this thing in its normal orientation, there we go, anode to cathode, you would think that was a normal diode. It wasn't until we re reverse it that you can see it's actually partially shorted diode. <laughs> and I was so close to writing it off as a shorted transformer primary winding. I'm just going to show you the um, circuit in the data sheet and this is pretty much what we have. It's, it's as basic as you can get and that's how they've done their um, their charger design. This is our switching IC down the bottom here, the LNK 613DG. And um, the diode in question is D5 right here. So we've got our uh, AC in through the bridge rectifier and our little inductor, exactly what we had. Uh, is capacitor there uh, and two or two capacitors, our 400 volt rated caps. Um, and this diode, which uh, went through our 300 ohm resistor, and in this case I got a 470K, but we had a 10K, 100K, what was it? Can't remember. Um, yeah, in parallel. So that's our uh, snubber for our um, back EMF kick when this, this is a MOSFET in our our um, switching controller drain and source pins um, so once that turns off we get a kickback that's what this diode does freewheeling diode so we've got positive coming through here through our primary winding and it gets pulled to ground through the MOSFET but as the magnetic field collapses when the MOSFET turns off it switches polarity, so this side becomes positive, this side becomes negative, um, and it can be quite a high voltage. And uh, this diode is designed so once we get positive here, it forward biases this diode, so it flows through here. The resistor is there to limit the current through it. So this was getting extremely hot. So in a uh, a fault condition where this was partially shorted inside or becoming becoming you know it had an internal resistance as well well I guess what we're effectively getting is instead of all of the current primary current going through the transformer and out through to ground it was actually some of the primary current coming down through here and back through the diode because it, it had a path in that direction and that's why it was getting so hot and that's um, I guess that's why the charging side of it wasn't operating as well as it should I would have had a low secondary voltage because it wasn't developing full current across the primary I'm thinking I never measured the secondary when it was partially working um, but that's my guess the back EMF kick is not going to generate the heat that we were seeing um, in there. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.